Um, this is a, uh, shows a partial pile of the uh, different categories that have been investigated since then, and that left tower uh, is the subjects that I'm going to try to get through in the next few minutes uh, in very short form. Uh, what we don't have is the quadratic growth, growth replicator that uh, uh, was mentioned briefly, uh, linear growth didn't really seem to quite cut it for reasons I'll get into in a moment. Um, replication as an idea started in, or uh, I'll start in the early 1940s when uh, John von Neumann invented a 29 state cellular automaton, uh, basically means infinite checkerboard with 29 different uh, colors of checkers or 28 in an empty space, uh, in which the uh, idea was that each checker had a different rule, which uh, changed how things appeared. The uh, construction arm was easy to build because there were a lot of different colors, uh, and the effect was that a pattern moved an arm to create a second copy of itself uh, gradually, and that copy could then go on and build more copies. The um, 1969 or 70, uh, John Conway and Richard Guy and others uh, decided to simplify that, got bitten by the optimization bug, and thought, once you're getting down from 29 colors, you might as well cut all the way down to the minimum, two. No more multicolored checkers. Either there's a checker there on the infinite checkerboard, or there isn't, and each square. Uh, you can throw some random checkers on and pick some rules and see what happens. And uh, all sorts of interesting things do happen. Over time, the uh, uh, patterns develop that persist. And uh, then you have to figure out how to use those patterns that persist to build something that uh, processes information. There's a glider going, uh, just appears out of random soup. And it, once it's there, it's going to keep going, because the rules never change. This is a zero player game. And you can figure out how to make it bounce off of things. You can use it to store information. Here's a, a storage of information. Here's a one, a zero, and a one, more zeros, zero, zero, one, one, one. Unfortunately, if you leave a glider in slightly the wrong place, you're in big trouble uh, because <laughs> things don't go the way you expect them to. That uh, leaves a fairly small amount of information you can put in. You can only put a glider or not a glider, binary information, uh, just so often. Otherwise, you're in trouble. But if you're careful, you can build quite impressive objects out of uh, the pieces that were found uh, trying things out. So uh, John, uh, John Conway's original proof would have uh, contained an, a lot of oscillators like this, a lot of gliders and uh, more, a much bigger structure than uh, what I'm showing here, because this was never built, because it's not buildable. You need a, a checkerboard the size of the Milky Way. Uh, but that was good enough for a mathematical mind who uh, you've proven that it can be done. A gazillion checkers, doesn't really matter. Uh, but the engineers got hold of it. A lot more people, thanks to the Martin Gardner articles, got uh, bit by the optimization bug and decided to build a lot of other things, working their way up toward a more reasonable sized uh, replicator. The, um, the list of things that they built is in the you know, hundreds of thousands of objects, uh, and there's no time to go into them all at the moment. What we'll go into instead is a new discovery uh, in the 1990s. Uh, oscillators were the only way people knew how to bounce uh, uh, signals until uh, Dave Buckingham came up with a uh, Herschel conduit, which is something that just sits there, waits for an active signal to come along made out of uh, cells. This is Game of Life, so it's cells now. And uh, once the signal's gone by, the, the stable things just sit there and wait for another signal. So it's a reusable system, and there's none of that worry about hitting something at the right time, because everything's just sitting in place. Um, turns out you can build pretty much anything you want to build with it. Uh, and 
we'll get to that a little more in a moment. This is a first construction arm in the game of life from 2004. It built that, that uh, eater there. The, this whole thing was used to build that uh, recipe was needed to build that one eater. To build itself, you would need an awful big recipe. Nobody did anything more than the eater. That was the last recipe built with that system until 2010. A uh, Canadian programmer, Andrew Wade, uh, working alone, I want to say in a secret underground laboratory, but it was probably just uh, a room with a computer in it, uh, built over several months an entire self-replicating uh, spaceship. Published it all at once, no warning. Surprised the heck out of everyone who thought they knew what they were doing with this kind of thing. And uh, even though it was a bit bigger than the, uh, than the construction arm, in fact, it used three copies of the construction arm, it um, was hundreds of times more efficient because the uh, Herschels could uh, accept signals at any time. The construction arm looked like this. Uh, it, instead of a, a line, it was only gliders coming along every now and then, hitting a structure called an elbow. The elbow allowed the uh, arm to move. And uh, we got gradually simpler and simpler construction arms, uh, all of which did the same thing. Uh, they could move the elbow away, move the elbow back, send gliders off to the side. And recently, these have gotten very efficient uh, going through narrower and narrower uh, spaces, simpler and simpler, to the point where it turns out to be doable with just a single glider. A uh, single line of gliders are capable of doing uh, universal construction, and uh, don't think I'd better go any longer on that. It turned, also turned out that uh, this was equivalent to uh, any number of gliders that could crash into an area to build anything, this can also be done by a single line of gliders coming from a universal construction arm. It takes a lot more gliders, but it works in the same, can be made to work in the same way, provably. So anything that we can uh, uh, build, we can build with one of these simple universal construction arms. And uh, that had better be where I stop. That thing that just went by, we don't know a recipe for yet, but that's a night ship. It just showed up this year. Uh, many other things we can build uh, fairly simply, piece at a time, uh, including the circuitry that, uh, that stores the information that allows the circuitry to function. Great, thank you very much. Let's thank.